Today we're comparing the Canon R5C to the A7S3 and I'm going to be using my trusty dual camera testing device. Just want to say a massive thanks to Hira Camera for sending me the Canon equipment and also to Danny for letting us use his A7 III. Well, what I want to know is, what do you think is going to be the outcome when it comes to image quality? You know what? I don't even know. Because they're high-end cameras shooting in 10-bit, you should be able to colour match it. So I think it's kind of just a case of what you feel more comfortable using. I'm not saying the Sony is any better than the Canon or vice versa. That's what it comes down to at the end of the day. Literally, what you prefer using. And, and the features that you use the most, and that's it. So let's go. And with that in mind, I wanted to focus mainly on the image quality and the colours within this video. And with this ongoing battle between Canon and Sony, I wanted to compare two similarly priced cameras and see how much of a difference there really is. So what did you think to the comparisons? Could you tell a difference? Camera A was the Sony and camera B was the Canon R5C. Now which one was your favourite? Let me know in the comments. And did you get it right? Now for me, the first thing I noticed was the sharpness of the image. The Sony is definitely a lot sharper and it has a little bit more detail. The detail is a little bit finer. But I am a fan of a soft image. If you saw my GH6 video, you know how much I liked that softness of that image. Image. but it's nice to have the sharpness because you can always dial it back a little bit in post and some of the shots I felt like the Canon was a little bit mushy in some areas it's almost like it's uh, I'm sorry <laughs> but I would say it's mushy rather than soft the dynamic range is quite close between the two on paper there's 14 stops on the Canon and 15 stops of dynamic range on the Sony and I have to say it's pretty close. The thing that makes the biggest difference is the contrast curve. I've spoke about this before, but the Canon seems to have this contrast curve built in. And, and that's good because the image looks really nice, but the Sony has a flatter image to begin with and you can make it look like the Canon, but you can't make the Canon look like the Sony. But I do feel like the R5C has the best dynamic range that I've used in a Canon camera. So when I did want to bring some of the shadow detail back, you can. So I'm happy with that. So actually, there's, it's not miles apart. The Sony is a little bit better in low light. I didn't do extensive tests, but what I have noticed with Sony's before in low light is the color shifts that happen. Yes, you can things are clearer and you can see better in the dark with a Sony camera, but the colors aren't natural. It doesn't represent the real life colors very well. So that's up to you, what is more important? Like if you're vlogging, for example, then you're gonna get a clean image, you're gonna be able to see better in low lit situations, but if color accuracy is more important, then Canon's the way to go. Speaking of colors, the colours coming from the Canon camera is so much nicer, in my opinion. That's just my personal opinion. I was actually surprised how close I managed to colour match them. And it did take a while, but I think I got quite close. I've used Canons for a long time, and I've used Sony for a while as well. And I've always had the same thought, which is, you can do anything to the colours in Canon, within reason, and it will look great. Like any look that I've ever used, you could just leave it as it is. Whereas on Sony, you have to do a lot of tweaks to get the skin tones right and certain greens and pinks to look good. And what I noticed was there's kind of a blue tint in some of the highlights on the Sony that I just couldn't get rid of. It's, it's just there. Whereas as you can see on this shot, the highlights on the Canon are really natural. Yeah, because there's times where you don't, you don't want any blue in this shot, but you've got it there on the Sony and you can't really get rid of it without going into the color curves. But then you're messing with the colors and you don't really want to do too much tweaking because that can shift other things. So for me, the Canon colors are a win. You know what? The colors on the back of the screen, it's better than a Sony. Canon and Panasonic LCD screens are the best I've ever used. It's just a really natural representation of what you're gonna get. When you've got a nice image on the LCD screen, it's more motivating and inspiring to shoot, isn't it? It makes you wanna pick up the camera and go out and film more. 100%. On the Sony, I feel like it's very contrasty and I don't like it. The colors aren't right. It doesn't give you much confidence in what you're filming. So it's like, but then when you get it into the editing software, the Sony looks great. It'd be good if they updated their LCD screen and made the colors look a bit nicer. Ignore the exposure right now. I'm just testing the image stabilization on these two cameras, holding them the same, just walking normally. And obviously I'm holding them both at the same time. So it's gonna be tricky. It might be quite wobbly. 
Whoa. And my arm is going numb. They're pretty much the same when it comes to stabilization. The Sony probably has a little bit of an edge, but they both look quite natural. Apparently the Canon doesn't have IBIS and I don't feel like I was missing it. However, when I put the 50 mil lens on, it doesn't have lens stabilization. And you probably noticed that some of the shots on the 50 mil were a bit wobbly, but it's good that it doesn't have that warping in the edges anymore when you've got a wide angle lens on. Did you hear that? Danny Boy said he's been a Sony shooter and today things might change. Canon's good. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm not going to be that guy. Right, what you're saying is you've got an open mind. I have got an open mind. Hang on a minute, you look taller than me. I need to stand It's because I am taller. <laughs> Look at that dip. Obviously I've used Sony for so long, but the only reason I've used Sony is because I started on Sony. It's what I felt comfortable with, but I have nothing against Canon. I think Canon has a better color straight out of camera than what Sony does. I think you're right. The, the main point there being what you start on is what you get used to and what you kind of yeah. carry on with. So when it comes to the size, they're obviously both hybrid cameras, but the Canon is a lot bigger, as you can see, because of that built-in fan. And also the lenses, the RF lenses have always been a bit bigger and a bit heavier. Now, when it comes to photography, you might want a bit of a lighter, smaller setup, but video, personally, I prefer a little bit more bulk to it because there's more to hold on to. It helps with stabilization. You can always fit a cage to it and use it that way. I always, if I'm doing anything like handheld, I'll always have a cage so you can balance things properly and get better stabilization. So I actually don't mind the size of the Canon, but it might be a problem if you want to vlog with this sort of camera. It can get quite heavy. So maybe the Sony might win on that category. I don't know. I, I don't see why the Sony doesn't need a fan and the Canon does. Why Why can't they make that happen? Obviously being very careful with Danny's Sony. It's the better one, so. We can't say that Because if you're not yet. careful, it might break, so. <laughs> Savage. One of my main concerns with the Canon R5C is the battery life. Jeez. Now I was getting around 45 minutes to an hour on one battery, which really isn't good enough in my opinion. I don't want to be worrying about changing batteries all the time and these things aren't cheap. So the Sony wins hands down on that category. Canon seem to do this thing where they solve one problem but then they gain another problem. So you've got a fan in there now, which solves the overheating problem, but now it's not very good on battery life. So I think it, when it comes to choosing a camera, what's more important to you? I'd love to know in the comments, so let me know. Is it image? Is it stabilization? Is it the features and the functions of the camera? Is it low light? Is it lens choices? And I've said this before, but if you are about to invest in a new camera system, you're gonna be spending a lot of money, so you wanna make sure you made the right decision. That's why I try and do these videos so that I can help you see a little bit more clearly the differences between the cameras. But you're never gonna really know until you test them yourself and have a little bit of time. And what's really helped me is hiring equipment before buying it. That's why Hire a Camera are great for this. If you are in the UK, definitely check out the link below. They're a great company, excellent customer service. I've said it before, they're absolutely amazing. They've not sponsored this video, they've just lent me the Canon gear to help make this video. So thanks again. I've got loads of content on the Canon R5C coming, so make sure you subscribe to the channel and press the notification bell. But I've also got plenty of stuff on the Lumix S5 as well and some more tutorial type stuff so don't miss it let me know which one was your favorite canon sony thanks so much for watching have a great week and i'll see you in the next one